What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Upper Room Talks and today is a very special day. Um, as always, I'm joined here with Hoyt. So guys? Um, that's not the, I'm just kidding. It <laughs> is special. Um, but the special part is, is we're just kind of doing a, um, a one hit wonder on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that you guys are having an incredible Thanksgiving. Um, for anybody that's listening or watching, it's going to be an incredible week for you. Um, today is actually Thanksgiving. Um, and so uh, we are going to talk about what Thanksgiving is, uh, why we give thanks, um, what it looks like for a Christian. Um, we're going to kind of put it in the Christian, a Christian perspective of, of um, you know, how we give thanks and um, but I want to talk about the holiday Thanksgiving as well, kind of give some history. Um, so before we do that, uh, once you like, subscribe, uh, share this, um, send it to a friend. Again, we thank you guys for being a part of Upper Room Talks. Um, it's always such an honor. And then next week we will continue with part two um, of the um, the discipleship, the roots teaching yeah. uh, or podcast rather. Um, and so thank you guys so much for being a part. So jumping into Thanksgiving. Um, why don't you, Hoyt, kind of tell us a little bit about Thanksgiving, kind of some history behind the scenes, um, some background, and then we'll jump into um, kind of a, essentially a give thanks teaching and, or a talk rather, and then a... Um, upper Room Talks. Upper Room Talks, is that's what we do. Um, <laughs> and then uh, talking about communion as well. So uh, give us some background, some history of the holiday of Thanksgiving, what it means, what it is. Yeah, so I'm not an expert on this. <laughs> I remember some of the stuff that I learned in third grade, and uh, that's right. That's yeah. about it. And then a couple facts that we've looked up here. But um, yeah, so the idea behind Thanksgiving is uh, there was a harvest. Well, first I should say the the pilgrims. You know, they came over into America, and mm -hmm. then uh, they're struggling. Nowadays, to, America. Yeah, it wasn't then. <laughs> What's now America? Yeah, what is now America? Um, and uh, they were struggling to get food. They were struggling with their harvest. Mm -hmm. And um, the Indians, the Native Americans of the areas uh, of their area, helped them with the harvest and helped them get uh, food with um, uh, fertilizer, with uh, not using fish as fertilizer or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and so the that was the Wampanoag people. And uh, after Said they that had three times. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wampanoag, Wampanoag, Wampanoag. Hey, that was a great job. Thank you. Um, uh, that was in 1621, by yeah. the way. That so was a long 16, time ago. In 1621, when they finally have their harvest, then they, they have this big harvest feast, and they give thanks, and they join in with the mm -hmm. uh, Native American people, the Wampanoags. Right. Um, and that was their uh, first successful corn harvest we have here. And the feast included deer, corn, shellfish, Roasted meat, ball games, singing, <laughs> and dancing. So they was playing football. Yeah. Uh, eating corn on the cob. Uh, getting sounds that like a in. sounds like a normal Thanksgiving at my house. Right. Like straight up. <laughs> <laughs> we eat. We hang out. We throw some football. Everybody's shoulder hurts after, um, or somebody has torn a hamstring because they were running and they're old now. That's that's what a normal Thanksgiving looks like at the Fortson <laughs> house. So. Right. Right. Uh, so we have colonists in New England regularly observe days of prayer or thanksgiving to give thanks for blessings like safe journeys, military victories, or abundant harvests. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the states and the federal government proclaim days of thanksgiving at irregular, irregular intervals. Uh, so then thanksgiving in 1863 became a national holiday um, in the United States. So then in 1942, the federal government designated the fourth Thursday in November as Thanksgiving. That's right. And so, Which is today. Yay! <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, so the, the pilgrims gave thanks for their food, for their harvest that they got uh, at that time. But we as Christians, here's the, the parallel that we're drawing mm -hmm. here. Um, we shouldn't stop at celebrating what God has done for us yeah. once a year. That's right. It yeah. shouldn't be one day out of 365 days that we uh, that we give thanks to God for all that He's done mm -hmm. for us. Um, you know, we we made a uh, a holiday out of it, but it should be every day. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so and, I mean, I mean, even if you're looking at that time, like. 
the Lord is the one who gave the harvest. You know, like He's the one who made yeah. it happen. Uh, yeah. uh, in, in, in all reality, I mean, He's the the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He made made the creation. He made it all. Yeah. You know, and so that's where the true thanks is. It's not necessarily um, just because we have a great harvest. You know, mm-hmm. it's like no, we're thankful for the one who gave the harvest, yeah. who allowed the harvest to happen, um, and mm-hmm. and that's the Lord. And Paul, so, Paul has said that uh, one man plants and another man waters, but God, God brings the increase. God brings the increase. That's right. And so you can do all you want, but if God never brings the increase, then you never have a harvest. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, so, and so that's um, kind of the um, the connection there for us is um, all things come from the Lord, mm-hmm. and um, we do, we should give thanks in everything. Yeah. Period. Mm-hmm. And again, like you said, not in just one day, not not observing just one day to give thanks to the Lord, but mm-hmm. rather every single time, mm-hmm. every single moment, every single thing of our lives. You know, talking about First um, Thessalonians 5.18, it says, in every situation, in all things, um, give thanks in all circumstances. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and, and this is where we should live our lives, no matter what we're going through, um, what we feel like that day, or feel like that week, whatever our circumstances may be, um, we give thanks. Yep. We give thanks. Yep, for sure. And, you know, <laughs> believe it or not, this podcast is not about the uh, venison and the, the, the shellfish <laughs> and the corn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's not what the holiday is about. That's not what this podcast, podcast is about. This isn't a history teaching on Thanksgiving. This is just, <laughs> you know, uh, a teaching on we should give thanks. Yeah. We're just drawing a connection here. Yeah, certainly, yeah. Um, Again, but yeah, like, every day is Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, yeah. yeah. I actually saw that on a sign when we were coming back from uh, Tennessee uh, by a church. Mm-hmm. It said uh, Thanksgiving should not be ju- on just one day. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but yeah, we ought to thank God for everything at all times, even the things that we don't really understand. Um, uh, as the scriptures that, or as the song says, I know uh, we praise God on the mountain and in the valley. That's right. Um, but then Romans eight twenty eight says, "We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose." Yeah, that's good. Um, so everything that happens, whether you see it as bad, whether you see it as good, doesn't matter. All of that is working together mm-hmm. by the power of God. God is weaving everything together yeah. that happens in your life That's for awesome. good. So you can give thanks in everything. When you understand that, it makes it so much easier to give thanks too. Uh, but even if you aren't understanding of that, it's just a good uh, practice to have yeah. in general. Yeah, well, I think it Be brings. Grateful. I think it brings a lot of more joy. Like you're mm-hmm. able to live a life of joy. Mm-hmm. Um, you're able to, able to live in more peace, mm-hmm. have more rest and comfort. Um, even whenever you are going through hard seasons of life, you still choose to be thankful. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. that, 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 that just builds character. Mm-hmm. It builds perseverance. Um, it builds so, so much integrity, um, so many convictions in your life that you're not willing to waver from. Like um, being thankful is, a, is, is, is a, an incredible characteristic of someone. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's hard to teach being thankful too. Yeah. Um, it, it's something that, um, that people have to learn. Like, mm-hmm. y- you just have to learn to be thankful. <laughs> we, the way we teach it is, it would be like, what do you have to be thankful for? And I mean, like, you hear this a lot in kids' yeah, ministry. Yeah. What do you have to be thankful for? Well, you're breathing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it, it is those things. We take those things for granted. Yeah. You know, that we even have a breath in our lung. Absolutely. You know, and even God says that breath that's in your lung was given to you mm-hmm. by me. Mm-hmm. You better be thankful for it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what, what do you do with that breath? Will you give glory to god yeah. <laughs> you know and so we take those little things for for granted that our our sight mm-hmm. our our voice our hearing our movement we take all of those things for granted um especially um whenever you lose them mm-hmm. you know and, and you lose your sight or you lose your your um the ability to speak then you're like man i was i should have been more thankful mm-hmm. um you know and so that that's um that's how we are supposed to and should live our lives. Yeah, and I think that's uh, one of two, at least two things that are like the secrets to contentment, to yeah, a, to a happy sure. life. So in terms of specifically with joy, I think grateful, gratefulness, like gratitude, that is vital mm-hmm. to having that life of contentment and of joy. Yeah. Um, because if you're always wanting something that you, uh, that you don't, 
currently have, I mean, you're never going to be happy with where you are. That's right, yeah. Because you're always waiting on something that you don't have. Yeah. Um, but when you're grateful for what you do have, mm -hmm. then you're able to have joy no matter what. Yeah. And then also on the side of peace, of contentment, um, if you, uh, uh, gratitude's a part of that as well. But largely, as Matthew 6 describes it, um, it's focusing on God. It's uh, how do you say, cherishing heaven, putting your, storing your treasures in heaven, building up treasures in heaven rather than on earth. Yeah. Because on earth, the moth will uh, consume, the rust will destroy, mm -hmm. the thief will steal. That's right. But in heaven, none of those things happen. Yeah. In heaven, it is eternal and constant and stable. Mm -hmm. So if you cherish the things of heaven, then you'll have peace. If you cherish the things of earth, then you're going to have anxiety. Yeah. And if your gratitude for what you if you if you have gratitude for what you currently have, then you'll have joy. And if you uh, if you're ingrateful, then you're not going to have joy. That's right. Yeah. You're, you're always going to be wanting. And so um, again, so it kind of it kind of talks about what Thanksgiving is and um, the importance of us giving thanks and being thankful. But what does it you know what what does that look like for us? And you know whenever we um, come together as followers of Jesus. Um, you find this in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty through thirty two, talking about um, communion and um, talking about remembering Jesus. Uh, again, you you go back to the pilgrims um, and the natives is is that they gave thanks together, like they ate a meal, mm -hmm. they fellowshiped with each other, um, and it was three days long. Mm -hmm. Like and they would set they celebrated what happened, um, and they did it in remembrance of what they just came out of. But they also the fact that we're still celebrating Thanksgiving, all because they had this one party one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like they did it for a reason in the sense of never forget this moment, never forget mm -hmm. this. And so I, I go to I go to uh, I go to what we call the the Last Supper, you know, Jesus, mm -hmm. um, a communion, us taking communion in, in the church as followers of Jesus. Um, again, we find this in First Corinthians eleven twenty through thirty two. Um, you know, we talk about the Last Supper. We'll, we'll just read it right here. Um, it says, um, "When you come together, it is not the Lord's supper that you eat." Okay, so Paul is. Um, giving a rebuke right here, um, mm -hmm. and and then and then showing us how we should do communion because what was happening is was was that people were coming together and forgetting why they were coming together and they were indulging on food and yeah. some weren't even getting food, mm -hmm. you know, and so it wasn't it wasn't for the remembrance of um, of Christ of Christ it had nothing to do with Christ we're mm -hmm. just coming together and and so essentially what was initially meant to remember something. It was no longer meant to remember something. Yeah, <laughs> or, not just for yeah it was no longer. Food. Yeah, it was just now. It was just oh yeah, we just come together every year at this time. I don't really really remember why we do it, but we just eat really good food yeah. and enjoy each other's company. Thanksgiving the same way, man. Yeah, I, uh, that's right, and that's why we talk about this mm -hmm. because we're not just coming together just to be with family. Right. You know, like it's so much greater than mm -hmm. that. Um, we're coming together with our family to remember Christ, mm -hmm. um, not to indulge on food. Right. You know, again, so you gotta, you gotta put this on, on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so when you come together, it is not the Lord's supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry and another gets drunk. What, <laughs> he literally says, what exclamation point? <laughs> do you not have houses to eat and drink in? You know, like you can go home and do that. Mm -hmm. Like th that's not the point of this, why you're mm -hmm. together. Um, or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I receive from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we have one element, which is what? The bread. The, the bread. Body. The body. Okay. And then 25, in the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Okay, so now we have two elements. What's the second one? The wine. Or the, the wine. Blood, the blood. The blood. That represents the wine. Mm -hmm. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to talk about that in a second. So going back up to the top, top part, 
what you see happening right here is Paul is is teaching the um, or reminding the Corinthian church of what the Last Supper was meant to be like, what communion was supposed to be like, what the what this what this um, um, gathering was the point of, mm-hmm. right? It was simply for the point of remembering Christ, and it, it even says, "Do this as often as you drink it," mm-hmm. right? And so really it's like every single time that you come together and you eat and drink, you don't do it out of just out of hunger. Right. You do it and you bless the food. So why do we bless the food? And so the first thing before we eat again is to remember Christ. Is to remember Christ. Mm -hmm. Not just so we can eat. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we can fall into it, and I'm guilty of it too, of just saying a quick prayer and then eating. Mm -hmm. But really what that's meant for is so that before I eat my food, I'm gonna say, Lord. I remember you, Lord. Thank you for mm-hmm. this food. Like you're literally blessing the food in mm-hmm. remembrance of Christ. Mm-hmm. Like th- that's what the prayer before your meal is for. Yeah. And because again, you're not just indulging on the food. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not. That's not what this is. Yeah. Um, Paul says, whether you uh, whether you eat or drink, do mm-hmm. all things uh, under Christ. Under Christ. Yeah. And, and, and so you're remembering Christ in this. Mm-hmm. And so that's what he's trying to get them to remember to do is as you break the bread together, as you drink the wine together, and you do these things to remember the body of Christ and the blood that was shed for your salvation. Mm-hmm. That's what it's for. Yep. Period. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on to talk about, um, uh, again, in 27 through all the way through 32, um, talking about if you take this in an unworthy manner, then you will be... Um, you will be um, guilty of the guilty of the judgment of the the wrath of God, mm-hmm. and so we have to examine ourselves. It says, uh, "Let us therefore, um, let, or let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself." In other words, um, if you, you don't understand what we're doing here and you just indulge on the food, then you're drinking judgment upon yourself, mm-hmm. eating judgment upon yourself. And so that's you have to examine yourself, cleanse your heart of everything, and say, Lord, I, I love you. I thank you. Thank you for this food. I remember you today. I remember your body. I remember your blood. And mm-hmm. I'm thankful. Right? Yep. And then you take the communion. Mm-hmm. Right? And so that, that's the, the point of, um, you know, why we do communion together as a church. Um, so, like, for instance, next Wednesday, <clears throat> whenever, um, well, actually, last Wednesday, if you're listening to this podcast, um, um, last Wednesday, we, we were doing Friendsgiving. Um, and in Friendsgiving, um, we're not just jumping straight into eating this meal. We're going to take a time before um, this meal and do communion mm-hmm. because we want to set the night, set the tone of why we're here together, right? And we're going to remember the Lord. And we're going to set a time. We're going to set apart time beforehand to give thanks to the Lord. Yep, that, that's that's the goal. Mm-hmm. You have anything on that? Yeah, man. Uh, I think it's important that you uh, take time before every time you eat and every time you drink to uh, remember the Lord. Not just when you're with other people, but when you're by yourself, mm-hmm. uh, so that everything that you do, everything, uh, every time you eat and drink. Uh, you're remembering God. You're refocusing yourself on God yeah. because I mean that's three meals in a day. Assuming you eat three <laughs> meals, yeah. I mean that's three meals where you can you have an uh, an opportunity or a uh, a mental remembrance tool to uh, refocus yourself. Yeah, remember on who God. gave you this food? Yeah. Who provided for this? Was it your money that paid for this food? No. <laughs> right. The money I have was from God. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm remembering God for this, mm-hmm. thanking Him for His provision on my life. Yep. Um, you know, I think of it like this. This is I'll end it. I'll end it like this. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that we remember here in the United States is 9/11, mm-hmm. right? Uh, whenever it, you know, whenever September 11th comes around, um, you know, we we remember a lot. You know, we always. There's always a, a post everywhere. There's comments everywhere of we'll never forget. We'll always remember. And, you know, wh- why Why do we do that? Do you know, know why? Well, I mean, so that you can honor it. Yeah, you can honor it. And also so that it carries on to the next generation. Yeah. It never ends. 
you will, I will always remember whether I was alive when it happened or it wasn't alive when it happened. But I promise you, in 30 years, 40 years, people are still going to remember 9-11. Because people took a moment that day to take a moment and have remembrance mm-hmm. and say, we remember that moment. We remember the lives that were sacrificed. We remember the things that happened. We remember the planes that hit the hit the buildings. We remember the ones that hit the um, the Pentagon. We remember all of these things that happened and the lives that were shattered that day. Mm-hmm. We will never forget that moment. It keeps a humility factor in in your life. It um, it brings honor where honor is due. Um, and so I say this right here: How much more should we honor the one who gave his very life for our eternity? Mm-hmm. How much more? How much more every single day of our lives should we give honor to the one who made a way for us to have eternal salvation so that we don't have to spend eternity in hell and in, in complete torment and separation from God? The one who would crucified himself to a cross, died, rose again for us. How much more does he deserve the thanks? <laughs> How much more does he deserve the remembrance mm-hmm. that everything that we do? I'm actually wearing the shirt, the the food shirt that says, like what you said earlier, everything you, um, every, whether you eat or drink, whether you eat or drink, you do everything do unto the, the Lord. Lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. like literally everything is to give thanks to God, mm-hmm. and so that's the that's kind of the parallel parallel that I use there, the example. Um, to show how important communion is, how important giving thanks to the Lord is, because He deserves it. And I believe in giving honor where honor is due, and He is due of high, high, high honor in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I will forever give Him thanks for my my salvation. Yeah. Very, very thankful. So so thank you guys for being a part and watching. and, And again, I hope you guys have an incredible Thanksgiving. Um, and so take a moment today, take a moment as you're listening this morning, or if you're, um, listening a week from now or a month from now, um, today is Thanksgiving period. Every day is Thanksgiving. Come on. Um, in the sense that you give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances, every single moment of your life. Um, and then every, every single thing that you do. So take a moment today, take the rest of the day <laughs> and just think about the Lord and thank him for everything he's done for you. So thank you guys so much for joining us and being a part. And as always, like, subscribe, send it to a friend, and hopefully this is encouraging to you. Thank you, Hoyt, for being a part. Um, It's always an honor. You're giving thanks right now. That's right. I'm giving thanks to you. (laughs) I'm honoring you. Uh, So thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. See you.